Can, can everyone hear me now? My voice has definitely seen better days, guys, so I, I, I really, really apologize. I'm going to try to force this sound through this mic as much as I can. <laughs> it's, so great to, it's so great to see everybody. It's so great to be here with you. Thank you. And I'm um, looking forward to some chats. We're going to make this as interactive as possible, but first and foremost, let me just know, what, what's your day been like? Oh my gosh. Um, it's been a, it's been a, I mean, let me just put my boba down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think this one actually is, um, it's got some grass jelly in there. Grass jelly. Do you like bubble tea? I, I like bubble tea. I don't know if I've had grass jelly though. Oh yeah, you must, uh, you must try. If it weren't COVID times, I would, no, I would give it to you. Um, what's my day been like? Well, we, we did a lot of stuff with Novus today, so I had a little photo shoot. Ooh. Was, I was just saying on set, it's, it's really interesting slash ironic because I remember when I was like, 22 years old and I graduated from college, I went and got myself rejected from every modeling agency <laughs> in the entire city. I remember I was like, how do I make some extra money? I was, I was an accountant, I hated my job, and I was like, maybe, maybe I could be a mom. Everyone has that thought. Everyone has that thought maybe at least at one point in their lives. And um, I just remember swiftly, just shut down, shut down. And uh, I guess I showed them today. We, we modeled for some, you know, nice jackets, and then, um, and then, and then got to come here. Wonderful. Okay, so if people don't know, or you just kind of buried the headline, but you were an accountant, and what oh, I nice. would love to know, also, you went to Western. The Mustangs are in the Vanier Cup. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Western. Some Western grads. Western nice. Grass. Appreciate you. Anybody else? Western. Right hey. All right. All right. Anybody from Queens? You can go. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. Everyone's welcome. Uh, but I want to know what your aha moment was mm. to go, I don't want to live this life. I don't want to be an accountant. Yeah. Um, I can only assume you had a little pressure from your parents. A little bit. A little bit. What was that aha moment to go, I want to put all my eggs into acting and really see this dream out? Um, well, I got fired. <laughs> so that feels like a real aha moment. No, it, it, it really did. Some people, you know, people have a variety of different stories of how they found their calling or they, you know, yeah, like were able to find their way to the job of their dreams and uh, usually starts with this, this moment and a lot of them had the courage to quit jobs themselves, to, to recognize that they were in a situation that they didn't want to be in and then to have the courage to leave that. That was not me. I knew that accounting maybe wasn't for me, but I was 22, I was super young. And um, I guess I just thought that that's what life was. Like you picked a job and you didn't particularly like it. And so you worked for 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours a week for like 40 years. And then that was it. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, you know, it's almost like I didn't know what I was missing until I tasted it. And um, it took kind of getting down to rock bottom. It took that rock bottom moment for me to really just sit down and self-reflect and think about doing things that brought me joy. And so, knowing nothing about the film industry, I went on Craigslist. <laughs> I would not recommend you do that today. But I went on Craigslist and I searched up um, acting jobs in Toronto. And I found my way onto the set of Pacific Rim as an extra. And I drive, by the way, Jason's here somewhere. Where are you, Jason? Jason's like my childhood best friend, and uh, I dragged him. And I didn't show up in the movie. Like, you couldn't see me, but um, he has this, like, mega close-up <laughs> where it's just him for three seconds. I died of jealousy. Anyway, um, I, think, I think the point of that story, and, the re and thank you so much for, for asking, is, is just, I think there's, there's something within each and every one of us this, this thing, you want to call it a calling or a passion, this thing that we were put on earth to do. I, I really believe this, you know? And um, sometimes we end up somewhere where we're not supposed to be. And we think that because of our parents' expectations or because of our friends' expectations, you know, that, that it's, it's fine just to kind of keep going. And, um, you know, what, what I would just say to that is, is life's short mm -hmm. and um, you're not, you know, you shouldn't have to get fired from a job 
just to realize that it wasn't for you. And especially, you know, I'm looking out at a lot of younger people in the crowd. This is, this is the most important thing is you have to give yourself permission to, to dream. You know, I had to give myself permission to say out loud, I want to be in movies. It just seemed so ridiculous and I, it seemed like so stupid that I didn't even want to say it to myself, you know? And so um, I think it starts with that. I think that's the first step in, in kind of achieving, achieving whatever it is that you set your mind to. And you've been in a few movies, eh? <laughs> there's, been, there's been a couple. You guys seen it lately? Anybody? Yeah. Uh, We're gonna make this as interactive as possible, so I'm throwing this to the audience. Who has a question? What's your skincare routine? Oh, that was my next question, oh actually. Oh my god, it's very kind of you. Um, I, uh, I'm gonna disappoint you. Like a bar of soap. <laughs> like one of those guys, I don't know. I had this company send me this like big box of skincare recently, and I'm trying to read the instructions and it literally feels like rocket science. I'm like, apply this every other day, but in a drop and mix it with the other, and then I was just like, going back to my bar of soap. Um, I'm, I'm very lucky. But I, I'm, I'm looking out at everyone, and everyone looks very beautiful tonight. And yeah. I think you should ask everyone for their skincare routines. Because <laughs> everyone's skin is perfect. Who else? Who's got a, another question? What's your uh, favorite boba? They didn't even wait. No. <laughs> well, that was my they other question. Um, <laughs> you really want to know the answer then. Um, if, if you don't know what boba is, you know, boba slash bubble tea, you guys really got to try it. It's, it's one of my favorite drinks. I'm, I'm going to little product place I'm gonna take a sip right now. It's perfect. Um, I like I like a good milk tea. Um, this is milk tea with grass jelly, it's very nice. I like jasmine tea, jasmine milk tea. And uh, once in a while I like a little kiwi slushy, just to mix things up a little bit. <laughs> Anyone else? Sorry, in the back, yeah? Oh, I thought that was a question, sorry. Here. Mm. Oh, it's like a bar of soap, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no workout routine. It's, uh, <laughs> no, it's, well, I, I'll, I'll say this. Um, I have been slacking, but when I was preparing for the movie, it was like, um, it was two workouts a day, five days a week. Um, I would train maybe three or four hours with the stunt team. Um, every day we work on kind of movement, um, plyometrics, we'd work on flexibility, things that would help me fight or look good fighting on camera. And then, um, and then I'd go, I'd most likely have lunch, and then in the afternoon, I'd have um, strength and conditioning. So weights, um, you know, trying to build muscle, um, trying to get swole, trying to look good for Instagram, you know, all that, all that stuff. That was, it was a unique challenge for us because it wasn't just about getting big. You know, um, Shang-Chi needs to move well. And so any muscle that we built, it had to be good muscle. And, and I had an amazing trainer, his name is Chief, um, when we shot out in uh, Sydney, Australia. And he, he really helped me with the diet, with the workout and everything. And uh, I'm just gonna say, I love him to death. I'm so glad I don't have to deal with him anymore. <laughs> At least until they green light Shang-Chi too. Sorry? Um, that's a really good question. If you would, if you would have asked me two years ago, I would have said Jeremy Lin, and then I met him and, and we became great friends. Um, who is it now? I'd love to meet Elon Musk and just be like, dude, what are you? That wouldn't necessarily be a fan thing. <laughs> Um, there, there's so many, so many. There's, you know, Will, Will Smith, Leonardo DiCaprio, Steven Yeun, um, Daniel Day Kim, Spider-Man, mm. any of them, you know. Um, I'm, I'm really excited for that movie, by the way. Um, yeah, so many, so many. That's a great Let's question. get a question from, I think some of the kids over there had one. We should, hey, what's up, man? What was my, what was my favorite show that I binged? 
Oh, there's so many. You like you like comedies? What, what do you like? Oh, Shanti is not a show. He said show. You, oh, you mean like all of it? Okay, okay. That's a really good question. Do you like Brooklyn Nine Nine? Nice. Um, I really like Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's fine. We can have one more question. You know, one more? And the little guy in the back there. Hey. Great question. How many times did it take you to do the bus stunt in the movie? The bus which, fight. Which one? There were. <laughs> the, the, the first there original. Were <laughs> oh, the door. The door. Please. Oh my God. That one I think took uh, about 20 takes. They generally, we'll, we'll do a lot of, so we shot that bus fight over like a month and a half. That was by far our most complex um, fight scene. It was very, very intricately choreographed. We had a, a wonderful um, fight choreographer and uh, second unit director that were Jackie Chan stunt team alumni. So they, first of all, they knew what they were doing. They knew their stuff. And second, like, they wanted to up themselves. You know, they wanted to make this fight something that was truly kind of iconic. And so um, it was the, you know, we'd been working on that thing for, for six months by the time we actually shot it. And um, it's such a testament to their hard work and um, we're, we're very, very proud of it. But yeah, that bus, oh man. Uh, that, that baseball slide flipping over, that, that injured me. Um, but we did it about at least, I would say, 20 times. And I think we did it right, just at once. The one time you saw it. So. Yeah. so, you have had so much success. Thank you. Thank you. And Canadians are so proud. Do you take that with you when you're, you know, gallivanting and in Hollywood? Like, do you feel the love from Canada? Oh my God, so much. And, and, I, and I gotta say, like, I, you know, it, it sucks, right? Because when you're young, you know, when I was younger, all I wanted to do was leave. You know, all I wanted to do, you know, I had this, image in my mind that I had to make it in Hollywood, I had to make it in Hollywood, and you know, it's like, now after everything that's happened, it is such a special feeling to come home and to be among, you know, basically family, among people who, you know, first of all, I've, I've been, I've been, a lot of you guys have been with me since the Kim's Convenience days and have been, you know, supporters of all the things that I fight for, diversity, inclusion, and um, you know, it's just, a, it's such a wonderful place to be able to touch grass and to ground yourself. Um, so I, I truly, truly appreciate it. It's, it's a country like no other. Um, I, I truly mean that. I've, I've been to a, a few now. <laughs> they made me promote this movie and, and I just, I love Canada so much. Thank you. Really, really so much. We love you. <laughs> You know, just the fact that you say A, a. I, I love it. Yeah, I love you're it. home. You're home. I'm home. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you.